Hey everybody. Here I got this really cheap power supply that come out of a parts machine I got recently. It came out of this HP computer sitting down here. This is a um, Pavilion A1632X. I'm guessing the original Best Tech power supply and it failed. So the previous owner of this machine is just decided to replace it with a really cheap knockoff power supply. This is also the same system that the dual core CPU came out of that went to the Black Max the other day. This machine had a hard to find socket 939 Athlon 64X2 CPU. It was a 3800 plus and I got that CPU in the Black Max. Normally it runs at 2 gig. I got overclocked to already 2.5 gig. No problem. So definitely good overclocking CPU. Right now I, I actually stuck a, a single core 3200 plus into here and I tested this board out the board works fine but when I had this thing still in the computer work store I tried to test it out and it didn't post the power supply and the fans come on but it didn't post but of course when I tested it here at home I had a different power supply on hand so evidently the cheap power supply that was in this machine had a dead 12 volt rail let's go and open that power supply up and have a look inside of course here's the unit let's go ahead and open it up I've already opened it one time just to have a look inside and it's another example of a really bad one really bad unit really cheap knockoff which by the way here is the specs on this unit It is a Chief Max 450 watt power supply. This sucker couldn't even put out 450 watts on a good day. And it's rated for 28 amps on the 3.3 volt rail, 30 amps on the 5 volt rail, 28 amps on the 12 volt rail. Has one amp on minus 12 and one amp on minus 5, so obviously, there you can tell it's using an old ATX specification because. Minus 5 volt is no longer included in the modern units nowadays. And our 5 volt standby rail is 2 amps. This is nothing but a big lie, guys. Remember, this power supply could probably only put out maybe 250 watts on a good day. Really cheap. Heat sinks are kind of thin. They're okay, but. They're a bit on the thin side. It does have two filtering chokes on the output. That's actually kind of surprising. It's not as bad as some I've seen, but it's not really all that <coughs> well either. It has only one blue capacitor going to ground. That's the back over here. It's right there. And as you can see here, our filter chokes bypassed. No extra Y capacitor were installed here. The next capacitor would normally go here but that was never installed and even a, resist, a, even a resistor could be installed there. That was never done. Of course that's to cut cost. And notice the size of the transformers in this unit. This unit has two. A blue one and a red one. Let's set this thing down. Have a look here. Notice the transformer at the back how small it is. Really, really small. Not that impressive. Not that impressive at all. Good close look here. There's the other transformer. Here we go. Get a good focus. 
You notice here they have four diodes where they should have a rectifying bridge. This is only a minor issue because usually the cheap power supplies don't actually fail here. They actually fail in the this area. The transistor is located under this big heat sink. I, this is where I see a bunch of them fail, especially on videos on YouTube where they have the units open when they're testing these units on a active automated load. This is usually where these power supplies will blow up. It's right in this area. And which even when they don't blow up, they're still not very healthy for your computer, considering that there's no filtering whatsoever on these things. Or not much on the input, at least. And let me see here. I was having a look here. And notice here, this is this is why I believe the 12 volt rail is dead on this unit. I haven't plugged this power supply in since I got it home, but I did attempt to try it out when I was still in the computer work store. In which I'm not sure, maybe it's a different rail. I, I'm not exactly sure because the fan did work. The cooling fan did come on, so maybe it's a 5 volt rail or something. Something's damaged here for sure. Look at the look how black that spot on the heatsink is. Something has definitely been hot. And the tip of the screw, let me see, right there it looks a little discolored. I'm not exactly sure how this unit failed. It may still work, but not like I'm going to use it. Even the fan they skimped out on. The fan is junk. I mean, with some 3-in-1 oil it'll be fixed, but still though, it's sad. You can consider this another example of a cheap knockoff power supply. Let's compare it with another one. Here is the Chief Max power supply. And here is a supposedly 580 watt Sunbeam Case Gears 580 watt unit. Which both of these couldn't even put out their rated outputs on a good day. Or any day. I mean, think about it. Look at this one. I mean, it's similar to it's got filtering components bypassed. At least they did put some capacitors on this one. That's surprising. And here they actually did a good design with this one diode. They actually spaced it out from the rest of everything because this diode does get quite hot. And we have a single output filter choke on this one. And. Here's the transformers in this one. Look how much bigger the transformers in this one are compared to this one. It's ridiculous. At least this one has better heat sinks and better transformers. And of course, here's our primary capacitors. No MOVs, of course. They never they never put MOVs in cheap power supplies like this. Let alone the rest of the stuff they bypass. Okay, there's two cheap power supplies. This one here never did die, although I didn't have a humongous load on it. I was only running like a penny or four with this thing the majority of its life. Now I'm going to compare this with yet yeah, another power supply. Yet yeah, this third power supply I'm going to compare this with will be a good power supply. Here's a much better quality power supply. This is a Delta 300 watt unit. It is the model Delta DPS 300 PP, as you might be able to see here. Let's have a look at this thing, how much better quality it is. We have all our filtering components in place. We have these big, humongous primary filter chokes here three of them. We have our X capacitor here. We have our Y capacitor installed. We have two of them here. Here's a rectifier bridge. 
and even on the plug they have a filtering setup here we have some more white capacitors directly on the plug and we have a ferrite core here with some wires wrapped around it this power supply even has rheostats installed and I believe these are to adjust the output voltages by a little bit and here's a look at the primary capacitors and we have MOVs installed on the inner side here and there's another filtering choke there's another filtering capacitor going straight to ground turn this thing around some more have a look at the back here notice the nice heat sinks in the large transformers larger than the transformer on both these cheap power supplies Hit the cheap power supplies are ready to put up more more power does that make sense or what it doesn't anyways I mean look at the quality here this is I think all power supplies should be built like this if not better in some cases nice humongous chokes on the output side and here is our sensor for the fan yeah this power supply has a sensor to control the speed of the fan a lot of cheap power supplies don't even have that they just run the fan straight off the 12 volt rail and here's our output capacitors not exactly sure what brand they use here but they seem to be holding up pretty well this power supply was pulled from a 2005 e-machine all they do is recase it into a different power supply case and it'll be just fine. Anyways, here's an example of a, of a good unit versus two star units. Anyways, any questions or comments? Let me know.